Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome to uh, Wildlife World Photographers channel. Uh, in today's talk, um, we will uh, be discussing a few unique uh, wildlife photography experiences from uh, the perspective of our photographers coming from different parts of the world. Allow me to briefly introduce us, um, Alex from Romania, Alexei from Latvia, Ricardo from Italy, Manos from Greece, Pablo from Israel, Ivailo, Bulgaria, and your moderator, myself, Yetmir from Albania. We had a couple more uh, wildlife photographers who could not join due to the last moment changes to their personal schedule. Uh, tried to reach out to a few members to compensate, but obviously it was a bit too late for them to, uh, to arrange, so we understand. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, here we are, uh, and you can't wait to start. Um, as we announced uh, during the last week, uh, each one of us doing five-minute slots uh, will be sharing memorable photographic moments. Uh, this gathering is designed to foster uh, our community, promote learning, inspire fresh perspectives, and discuss captivating moments from wildlife uh, photography, and we all love that. Uh, but before we start, uh, I would like to announce uh, once, once more uh, the Snap in Flight event happening uh, for the fourth time at uh, Škoda Lake, Albania during uh, June 16th, 17th, and 18th of this month, uh, uh, where uh, 20 of us uh, will be gathering uh, to celebrate nature and friendship while photographing birds. Among uh, many birds, uh, uh, we we plan to photograph uh, the Alvation pelican and uh, whiskered terns. Uh, additionally, a group of six of us uh, later in June, it's going to Hungary, also where we plan to photograph rollers, bee eaters, a couple of raptor species, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, we are very excited. Uh, we share the passion on these trips, uh, which definitely resonates with how we feel today. Uh, and all as we all talk about what we love. So having said that, without further ado, uh, let's start our first presenter, uh, Alex from uh, Romania. Please briefly tell us uh, where you're based in Romania and uh, share with us a unique moment uh, from your experience as a wildlife photographer. Sure. Um, I'm based in Bucharest, which is the capital of Romania. And... Um... This means that uh, we Romanians can can go and shoot wildlife into the Carpathian Mountains, which are, I don't know, 150 kilometers south of Bucharest. And uh, of course, the Danube Delta, which is a massive source for, you know, wildlife uh, photography. And we can include there like, I don't know, 350 uh, different species of birds and all, all, all kinds of mammals. And, you know, that's it's a huge source for us. And um one of my stories is uh, from last year, I think uh, it was during pandem pandemic, maybe two years ago. And um, um, we were we were down into the uh, the new Delta, and uh, we we took the boat. Um, a, fr a friend of mine and and myself, w we took the boat and then stopped at um, you know a small piece of land. As you can see in this photo, uh, I don't know, 10, uh, 10 meters by 10 meters, something like that. And we were we were actually sitting and waiting um, for something uh, spectacular uh, to, to happen there. And mm -hmm. we are actually expecting a, a white tailed eagle to, to hunt um, just in front of us. I mean, th the guys were flying up in the sky and we are just waiting there um of course we are under camouflage and just sitting there and you know waiting for that eagle to come and um at some point this cute little friend came came, came just in front of us uh, i don't know maybe two meters or three meters uh, the little otter did not observe us and uh, it was quite funny because you know we are actually looking at her i'm she didn't realize that we were there and just, you know, sitting in front of us and smelling and, you know, and then went back uh, into the weather. I was able to, to take the phone uh, and, and catch this photo. 
uh, of course the subject the new subject was too 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 close to the to the camera so i i couldn't uh, you know focus and and take a real uh photo a real right. wildlife photo. but uh, still, I was able to take the, the 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 mobile phone and you know do this and you know it's, this is a unforgettable memory for us, uh, for me and my friend that we we're uh, waiting there. So you know it's quite funny if you you know if you um, uh, consider this uh, you know situation. Absolutely, and you so, it, 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 and it's not something you see every day. So you score; it's a score, definitely. It exactly in a, in a spontaneous way so it's it's awesome exactly but you guys i mean you guys know each each um each trip out in the wild can bring you know uh different memories and all kinds of memories and this one this one is you know special i mean for me special and and you have your own memories and you know that's that's the beautiful part i i think mm -hmm. you know so yeah did the eagle come did the eagle come eventually uh no the eagle didn't hunt where we expect you know okay. i mean you know just just in the back of our side or you know on the right side on the left side but not where we you know where we stand so that, that that's that's normal <laughs> as you guys know yes yes <laughs> that's right yeah, that's awesome. Uh, any any other details? Or oh, this is this is it. This this was great, by the way. This this was this is this, yeah, this was well, really... not many details. Yeah. Uh, we didn't catch the the, the bird, and okay. we only yeah. So you know, well, uh, Alex, thank you so much. This is great. I appreciate <laughs> that, and uh, we'll definitely want to uh move along and uh yeah. let's uh let's ask Alexei uh. To tell us about the wolf story here. Okay. Go ahead, Alex. Alex, say, sorry. Alex, say, can you hear me? Maybe you're muted. Hi. No, no, now yeah. it's okay. Yeah, now it's okay. good. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexei. I'm coming from Latvia. I'm based in the capital city of the Riga. But uh, mostly I take my photos in uh, our country region as uh, called Kurzen. It's uh, eastern region, western region. No, mm -hmm. just a second. <laughs> eastern, west, western, western region of Latvia. It's a region for the B Baltic Sea coast. Uh, my story, Jetmir, uh, uh, can you please make a photo, first photo with the uh, with the wolf cub? Sure, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah this one, yeah. Uh, the my spectacular story was in 2019. It's uh, end of the July. Uh, I was walking in the, the national park called uh, Slytherin. It's um, the biggest uh, natural reserve park in Latvia. It's uh, completely wild. There is no normal roads. There's no normal paths. It's a uh, really wild, wild, wild region there because it uh, is under protection. So the my, my main call in that day was uh, to find the uh, summer places, some summer place for the copper kelly. It's mm. uh, when the Kapper Kelly Lake is over, the birds going uh, deeper in the woods. They changing their feathers, and uh, they is un unable to fly in that moment. Uh, direct of the end of the July, it it is a process uh, for the feeder switching. It's uh, com almost complete, and it's the best time to find some uh, real habitat for the Kapper Kelly. Mm -hmm. uh, my walk was around uh, nine and a half kilometers in the woods. I was completely unexpected. Uh, I saw and the one moment highlighted ears, what you see now in the photo. Uh, at first, first of all, I was thinking it was a fox. I stopped. I have uh, my camera set was uh, one of 500 uh, shutter speed, two and a half thousand ESO because it's uh, dark wood 
but I saw these highlighted ears and I try to look what I see. And the one moment I see, it's not a fox, it's a wolf cub. I was mm -hmm. uh, really, really amazed because um, in this wild situation, uh, there is no one except me and the wolves. Wow. Uh, in the second, in the second, I look a little bit in the right, and I saw other three wolves. It was two adults. Can you switch to the another picture? There is two adult wolves and the one little cub there. Mm -hmm. I heard from the left and from the right side in the bushes there was a minimum more two wolves. One from the left, one from the right. And it was completely freeze moment. I didn't know what to do because uh, you can call any help. <laughs> Uh, from wow. the, for example, weapons, all you, all you have, uh, I had a knife, <laughs> but I did a, a couple of shots and I decided to switch uh, that camera mode to video. I decided to make mm -hmm. some video record of that moment. Um, the wolves have staring at me in direct eye, eye to eye. It was a contact for 30 seconds. I was completely, let's say, I was happy from the one side. From the other side, it was some uh, strange feeling about what will be next. Because two wolves Absolutely. from the right and from the left, <laughs> they was also uh, standing there. I heard they make some few steps and stand again. Uh, I decided to make that video. And at moment, when I took my camera to see in the video mode because in that moment it's a photo take it with a Nikon D500. Uh, at the moment I have switched the video, my settings was too dark. I need to make it uh, brighter. I look into the display, I put my eyes up and there is every, everyone is gone. No complete, no signs. I just heard they going away. Oh my God. I stand there. Wow. Uh, for around two to five minutes i would i was thinking what should i do next <laughs> so will i turn around and go back or should i go forward and look and maybe i can see them again and yeah it was the moment it, it is completely unexpected it's not some kind of uh, oh, yeah. uh, moment what you expecting in uh, such a situation and uh as you can see, it's a complete, uh, it's a boreal wood. Uh, and yeah, it was my first meeting in the wild. It, 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 it was a 15 meters. Uh, mm -hmm. of me. And yeah, this this moment I will remember for all my life. I can since imagine. That, yeah, since that moment I have started to study our wolf packs. And uh, in this region, we have three of them. I have set it the uh, camp trap. Uh, cameras it's trail cameras to see what what is going on but um, unfortunately they they're not too many in our region but they still is hunted yeah. so <laughs> maybe I, I have many times in, uh, on the trail cam videos but um, so in the wild like this was this was at the, uh, around uh, 12 o'clock in the day uh, yeah. all all like uh, all what I can notice then when they had left, it was a day stay for the wolves. It was whole pack there wow. with the cubs. Yeah, lucky you, they incredible. were not uh, hungry, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see me there, and yeah, oh, <laughs> still alive. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, I'm thinking, just like we spoke before about the possibility of creating another recording for different ways of photographing wildlife as we mentioned you know photographing from the boat photographing from the car photographing from the field and so on uh this could be another uh, uh, another idea of a re future recording where we talk about dangerous moments because it's very <laughs> very unique I yeah, think. It's very interesting. so yeah. alex uh alex say thank you so much for sharing i appreciate it well uh invite our next friend here uh, definitely we are back here but i'm gonna say i'm gonna invite uh, evo 
to tell us about his story. And then while he starts telling us where he comes from and everything, I'll start setting up the pictures that he sent me. Thank you, Yatmir. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Ivo. I'm coming from uh, Bulgaria. I'm based in Sofia. I live here. But uh, I'm uh, taking photos not only in Bulgaria. I like to travel around the country. I know it, the country quite well. I'm visiting a lot of places. We have a lot of uh, um, quite interesting and nice places uh, for wildlife photography in Bulgaria, including uh, several heights, which are uh, quite good. One of them uh, famous uh, with the wolves, which uh, are coming uh, recently very re uh, regularly. And a lot of people took photos of them. Uh, it seems that uh, the wolf is my unicorn because uh, it's one of mm. the most sought after species uh, by me. But uh, And I have spent uh, numerous hours and days in, in this height and um, very, very little luck so far for me. Uh, but um, other people, they go there just for a few hours and... Uh, <laughs> They take photos of, of the wolves. The wolves come up, show up, and uh, make a show, and uh, people can get a good photos. Anyway, uh, and uh, I also like to to take photos in uh, in Greece. Greece is also uh, a country which uh, offers a lot of um, good places for wildlife photography. I I dare say I know uh, northern part of the country because I used to visit it very often and from east to west. So yeah, generally I'm um, uh, trying to, to make my photos in Bulgaria, Greece. Sometimes I also visit Romania, southern part of the country or even Serbia. Well, uh, it's more or less the Western Balkans. Besides that, I also like to, to go to the tropics and recently uh, I've been, um, many times to to the african continent to kenya tanzania and south africa in january i was i was there with a group of friends uh, probably in, in august i will also try to to visit south africa there um i would say this is um, one of the most am amazing place to take photos of, of animals because the animals are not that wild and skittish as they are in europe and uh, it is much, much easier from from this point of view. From other points of view, of course, it's not uh, that easy, but it's not uh, a matter of our talk today. I would like to share, um, I, I have, I have uh, in, in my experience as a wildlife photographer, which is now um, about 20 years, uh, I had many, 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 uh, um, great experiences with the wildlife uh, both in uh, on the european continent and in uh, in africa but i decided to share a very unique moment i had with a wild cat a few years ago here in bulgaria not far away from sofia mm -hmm. i was driving on a, um, a countryside road between the two villages it was during the winter close to to christmas uh, we still had uh, cold weather at that time, and we had quite some uh, uh, quite some snow. And uh, the camera was sitting uh, on the seat next next to me in the car, ready. Um, and I was trying to to explore the the area and to find something interesting to to take photo of. And usually, when it's very cold, uh, wild cats, which are generally nocturnal. They uh, also come out during the day to, to try to catch some small rodents or small birds. Uh, the same is also uh, counts for, for foxes. But yeah, this, this day I was uh, trying to, to see if something will come up. And then um, driving not, uh, not very fast, but also not very slowly, probably about 40 kilometers per hour, I saw that there is a wildcat um, uh, on one of the sides of the road, and it was uh, going towards the road. So I just turned the, the car around, went back, and I was really surprised to see the cat not where I expected it to be. It was much closer than I was expecting, and uh, it stood in the 
middle of the road and it lied down, uh, just trying to, to make uh, herself, because it was a young female, to make herself invisible to me. So mm -hmm. I just stopped the car, I turned off the engine and slowly got out of the car having my camera. Oh. The cat was just flat on, on the road, lying down, trying to cover and looking at me with a, a great fear. It, uh, the cat was not very far away. It was probably about 20, no, less than 20 meters, just straight ahead. Uh, what I did, I just got in front of the car and uh, tried to uh, um, squat it down as, as down as I could and started slowly taking photos of the cat. Um, probably in about less than a minute because I was completely motionless. I tried to, to be very calm, not to be excited, not to just to, to admit to the cat that I'm not a danger to it. And then suddenly the cat just stood up sit and started looking at me like a just a normal domestic cat which i was really happy to see that um and it made my day but in just few few moments the cat just started coming towards me oh, wow. slowly walking and you can see this photo i have a sequence of probably 10 15 photos from all the scene when the cat was uh, approaching me and this is already quite close so it was walking. Then at some point it uh, stopped, turned around, showed its flanks, so I could take a uh, best photo of, of a wildcat. Can you jet me show the, the next one? Yeah. That's uh, beautiful shot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> in 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 um it was amazing. And mm -hmm. and the fear just uh, was gone from its eyes. And yeah. it was behaving just just normal, just curious. And then I was expecting that that would be it. And then the cat will disappear in the bushes from the sides. But then it continued walking towards me. And then it got probably uh, around six meters from me because I had my 300 millimeter with the, uh, the double extender, which mm. means that the um, minimal focal um, point was about six meters. So the cat was became so close to me that I couldn't focus and I needed to slowly back up about half a meter to be able to get a photo. And the cat just stood in front of me uh, and, and sit and sit like, like a domestic cat, looking wow. into my eyes with absolute calmness without being... Um, without being afraid of me and uh, I became uh, I felt privile privileged that this wild animal allowed me into his world mm -hmm. and uh, it was not afraid of me it didn't despise me for all bad things the humanity have done to to wild cats in uh, in, in our part of the world and you can uh, change to the third photo to see how close it's a full size oh. photo and you can see um, staring at me curious, no fear, nothing, like trying to communicate with me. And we all, all this situation developed in the probably three, four minutes. There were no other people, no cars. We were between two villages away from, uh, from the settlements. And then I heard behind me that a car uh, was approaching. And then when the car came in uh, probably 200 meters. The fear came back to the eyes of the cat. It just started looking around and then just disappeared into the bushes. And mm -hmm. I really uh, was grateful and thankful to nature, uh, giving me this opportunity to be part of uh, this um, intimate moment. Because in the end of the day, it's a wild cat. It's not very hard to spot it, but usually when you spot it, uh, then the cat has also spotted you. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two options. Either the cat just runs away or it stays down and tries to rely on its camouflage and is prepared that if you move closer to, to just run away from you. And uh, 
yeah it's, that's it's great it's, thank I, you so I much you can remember all the yeah. all the moments from uh, all the seconds second by second yeah. i can remember this meeting with this great animal it was a young female uh with yep. very thick bushy um um tail purebred wild cats not a cross because right. they're right. hybrids uh, on the balkans but it was a pure pure wild cat thank so you so it much made my for, day yeah. it made my yeah actually, you know, <laughs> nice now when story. i when i remember this i feel really privileged and, and really happy that i had this moment absolutely thank That's you for sharing it with us as well i think it's it was quite interesting and with that said i uh, like to invite pablo to uh, introduce himself, where is he based, and uh, start telling us the stories. He sent me some pictures. So as he starts, I'm going to start bringing the pictures, and then he'll guide me to go from one picture to another. Go ahead, Pablo. Okay. Hi, my name is Pablo. I'm from Israel. Uh, the beautiful and the not so beautiful part of Israel, it's a very little country. It's just 500 kilometers from north to south, and just uh, 70 kilometers east to west. And it's it's very uh, easy to us to travel all the country, we, and we have a lot of uh, different weathers. And I I I live I live in the northern part, and there is a, in this season, as you know, in Europe is the season of the the eaters and so, and there is a, a old quarry that I know there is the, some uh, beaters there. And uh, at the, the end of April, I wanted to start to take pictures of them. I I, dra I drove to there, 200 kilometers from home, uh, and I saw at least one uh, one beater. And I, I was with this beater for three or four hours. Just one beater in all the quarry, uh, but it was very. Beautiful of all all the colors and the, and I, I I had time to to build an, an image and I took picture from the car. At the end of the day, I started to drove back to home. I I listen, I I heard a, a, a voice Mark! and well I, this voice I think is something else. And it was I think I was uh, this was a. A little, a little old. And can you go to the go to the next uh, image? In the same tree, uh, it was a little old there. And the end of the night, and as you see in the, just in the middle of the of, in, in the background there was a, a little part of the mountain and the sky, and this guy was in the middle of there. It was incredible, as if it continues to shut. I don't know why. Okay, I can uh, I, I think two weeks ago. Can you go to another one? Uh, just one, please. And yes. I saw uh, the parent with the chick, and uh, there was a, a nest there, and it, it was an old family, the two um, two adults and three chicks. And you see it here. With the dotted, the dotted head is the, the adult, and with the, the another one was the chick, and it was incredible because the uh, this is I think the first time that the chick flew from the from the nest to the to to the ground, and the the adult was in the tree, and in front of me was the nest, and the. the the adults start to shout to the to the chick that you can you can start to fly. There is there is no no uh, no danger here. And they started to understand. It was incredible. I I went. I drove two hundred kilometers here and back every day to, to be there. Not so, not so to be take photos as you as you said to be part of there without any interference. Be part of nature. And I. The adults started to call to the chick. You can fly, there is no danger here. I was in the car. And this in this very moment, the the adult went uh, flew to the to the nest and started to flow back and the chick tried to 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 flow to the 
to the tree, but uh, he, he didn't know how, and he started to fall. If you can go to another another image, and uh, there was a stick there in the in, in the downside of the of the nest, and the chick started to make the first um, exercise to fly, and the uh, jump, jumped to the to this uh, uh, to this uh, uh, to this wood. I started to to do the, the the movement to try to fly, and what the, all the all the flow all the flight was from the stick to the to the ground and back for five or six days, and every time I was there to shoot, I have millions of pictures of this guy to try to learn to flow, but nothing at all. After two weeks. Uh, uh, it was a uh, past Wednesday. He started to fly. I was there. I I prepared this moment for a, for a month a month or so to when the chicks will start to fly. And can you go to the last? This is the moment. Yes. For me, it was just incredible how this. You need to know, and you know, sure, the the size of the little hole is just uh, ten centimeters. That's all. But when he started to flow, to fly, it was really an incredible moment. Um, this is my moment. It was uh, a week ago, and uh, wow. for me, it was superb. And uh, that's all. And it's awesome. And uh, let me tell you, uh, I, this are, every story is so emotional. And I think uh, a, a recording like this really brings in front not only the image, but also the story behind it. And having uh -huh. a photographer telling it, it's really a true engaging moment. And I'm feeling it from every single one of you. And I Thanks. thank you for, for sharing. And this was incredible, too. I love the, uh, how the image is. I like <laughs> The feeling was almost the same that we had with the cats, with sure. wild cats. Mm -hmm. yeah. In in a, for a moment of for, you are part of there. You are not you are not in any danger, and you know as as photographer that you can do every, anything, mm -hmm. and the environment did not feel the the fear to you. You are just another 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 thing of nature. And you are part of it. You are not dangerous at all. I'm sure if you can, if if with the cat you have another half an half an hour more, you will can take a photos and maybe we will come to you without any problems at all. And uh, thank you. Thank you again for sharing. Again, uh, uh, I don't know many wildlife photographers from uh, Israel, but those that I know, they are serious photographers, including <laughs> you, my friend. So it's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Very Thanks good. Lot. Very good. All right. So uh, I want to call uh, Ricardo to uh, share his story. And uh, before he does so, um, we're going to open the first image here and then he can take it away you're welcome to take it away ricardo you're muted maybe ricardo you're muted ricardo we don't hear you ricardo excuse me it's okay, okay. Good. all right you're yeah. back go ahead i am uh, ricardo i'm from italy you know and i take a uh, photo uh, in Italy, of course, and uh, in Greece, uh, in uh, Danube Delta, in Romania, uh, Sweden, uh, Norway, and uh, Kenya, uh, and South Africa. And I think it's difficult to to show you my best uh, moment uh, in wildlife uh, as a wildlife photographer because uh, I love nature, I love the animal, and uh, is something special every time special when I I I am uh, in in uh, in the nature in uh, uh, to take uh, the the picture and uh, I love uh, this uh, and uh, every moment is uh, fantastic is special for me. But uh, 
uh, I remember uh, in uh, in February 2018, uh, I was uh, going in South Africa in a, <clears throat> in a camp. Uh, I have organized a, a wait a, a trip in uh, South Africa with other photographer. Mm -hmm. I've organized for. Um, um, give money at uh, one association, Leo Africa, for uh, help the wild animals in South Africa, okay? And you, it was uh, seven photographers, and we have uh, many occasions to, to, excuse me, my English and is not perfect, you know. It's, it's awesome, man, it's awesome, it's awesome. Yeah. You're understanding it well, yeah. thank you. That's uh, no, no worries. And, um, this Leo Africa is, uh, a association in the, for uh, the conservation of uh, African fauna, and uh, is um, <clears throat> we have see many wild animals. You know, in Africa, is the it's not difficult to see zebra, gazella, lions, uh, uh, hyenas, uh, many type of birds, uh, bird of prey, and uh, many others. Uh, be eaters of uh, many type of be eaters. Uh, many type of uh, kingfisher, and uh, it's very nice. But uh, the, the moment that I remember is a very special, is one night uh, in the bush. We sleep uh, in the middle of the bush, uh, and uh, in, uh, in a still house we sleep, uh, and um, without, uh, you know, this is the, the view where we sleep, okay? Beautiful. Oh, <clears throat> you can you can the next photo where uh, the, the house where we, where we sleep, uh, Jetmir, and this is uh, a stilt house in the lake. We don't have uh, doors, nothing, and we have uh, in the night uh, uh, two hours uh, for us to um, uh, wait. Uh, uh, to took turns of guard uh, with a big lamp, okay, to see that there are uh, dangerous animals uh, inside the uh, the house. We have seen in the night uh, many mammals, birds uh, that go in uh, in the lake to to drink, and uh, it's uh, very fantastic because it is it's, uh, uh, not many photo, you know, because uh, you are in a in a camp. Uh, of, of this uh, association with the, the vol voluntary and uh, it's not possible to take picture with the flash uh, and, uh, and the light only with the, the torch okay we don't take many photos because it's impossible in the night to take picture and uh, we only see many many animals arrive and this is uh, very nice and um, the, 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 the moment, the special moment is because in uh, seven days, we try to find uh, le le the leopards and we don't find any leopards in every day, no leopards. All the kind of animals, uh, lions, zebra, every, everything, and, but uh, no uh, leopards. And in this night, we see the leopard in the night. I think... Uh, uh, I think uh, 10 uh, pictures, but uh, only one uh, good because uh, I use my D4, Nikon, and uh, 300 uh, F28. But in the night, it's impossible uh, to take a good picture. 10, uh, 9, 10 photos, only one good because uh, I use... Uh, one uh, 20 second uh, to shot as you know is <laughs> in the night uh, mm -hmm. you can this big lens you can't stay very without tripods is impossible how uh, one i uh, i have and you can show the the, the, the photo it's not a special uh, very 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 special but is the 
uh, the experience is very, very nice. Okay, I have many, many good photos of many animals. But this, this is special because it's a very fantastic moment. Because we, I say, uh, we we came to try this animal uh, for seven days, and we don't don't see any anyone. And in this night, only one, and in the night. <laughs> <laughs> only one photo, good. <laughs> for me, perfect. <laughs> and then... Uh, this is uh, my story. Beautiful story, and then thank, and then you know what? Uh, we like to chase, man. You know, and especially when you are, when you arrive on a photo like this, that's that's great. So thank you for sharing. a uh, Beautiful story. I'll invite uh, Manos to share his story. I have also some of his pictures, so I'll just go ahead, Manos. Hi everyone, I'm Manos. I'm from Greece. I live in the north, um, in the north part of the country in a city called Thessaloniki. Uh, um, I photograph predominantly in Greece, but I also like to travel. I usually combine work with, uh, with birding. So if I go to a new place that I've never birded before, I'll try to stick like a couple of days for myself and sort of like, uh, combine it um so in one of those so i, I yeah I, I i i enjoy shooting as pablo said israel is you know a great country to shoot and i um is my favorite country to shoot outside greece so i visit israel at least like two two three times every year um i photographed in spain in portugal in the united kingdom in usa and um at some stage i want to go to africa and latin america which are places that i've never been and i want to do so my experience is not um moment related in a way it, um, um, it, it's it's taking in the hide um, this this shooting is in Ordesa and my gear in Spain. And Ordesa is a very special place for me. It is located in the Spanish-French border, and it's um, one of the best places in Europe to to shoot the um, the bearded vulture. And <clears throat> not representative of my photography overall because that that goes way. Uh, back before I got my my gear upgrade, so this is with pretty basic, you know, gear zoom and the hide also had the glass, so it's, you know it it wasn't the best conditions. But um, I I particular went there for the for the for the bearded vulture, and we have it in Crete as well, but you cannot you cannot see it so close, and I had quite good you know shots of the of the bird and everything, and it. You know, this is one of my, for me, this is one of my most emotional and important shots because this is a, a bearded vulture and an Egyptian vulture, and they're both um, under the threat of extinction. And to have two of the most vulnerable birds in the world sitting next to each other, I started, I started thinking that, you know, these are birds that are children might not be able to see out in the wild and um i i started making this story in my in my head you know i was wondering do they really know that they might get extinct you know and they're sitting right next to each other and what are they thinking what are they talking about you know i'm taking pictures of them and they're nearly extinct you know if we don't achieve to change things in, in 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 the environment these and many other birds will and species will 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 get extinct so i i don't I, I think i cried with the idea that um you know this is such a unique shot, shot for me because it, it it combines conservation um um thinking and, and photography in the same time now to go to a happier place. If you see that, if we go to, to, to the next shot, I, I, I managed to see very nice species uh, there. Ordesa has this amazing background, breathtaking views, exceptional food, and I really um, enjoyed it. So I'll just like show some couple of samples. Um, next one, Yetmir. 
And then one of these, I'm sorry for the quality. I mean, I just download them from Facebook. They're not the original copies because I have all my hard drives that work. So one of those shots, the bird is actually flying towards me and I really, really enjoyed um, um, the, the, the point of view. Um, next shot. I, I, I just love this bird, you know, I mean, it swallows bones itself, the acid fluids in, in its stomach just um, does the rest of the work. Um, you know, it, it was, it, it, it is a magnificent bird. It's it's definitely my favorite one. So, um, yeah, that was my moment. I mean, my moment was having an Egyptian vulture sitting next to a bearded vulture and thinking, what are we doing? You know, what's happening? You know, what are we doing to their environment? These birds, will my kids see that live flying? You know, next shot, please. And that's me up in the top of the mountain enjoying uh, a very, very good session. For those that haven't visited Dordessa, I strongly recommend it. It's very good for the Lama guide as well, for the Ptarmigan, um, um, you know, the the the, the, mm -hmm. the the some of the most difficult species of Europe live in uh, in that area. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very nice spot. Good hides. Very food is phenomenal. Accommodations are nice and relatively cheap. And you can combine traveling in Spain and Portugal and doing. I mean, the the, the Pyrenees are just um, an exceptional place. So, but as I said, you know my. I've got a lot of moments where, you know, animals surprised me and this and that and had meetings with wildlife, um, um, unexpected. Every single successful shot probably comes with a moment, isn't it? I mean, every single mm -hmm. shot is a moment. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to the, the feelings that I, I felt at, at, at that particular moment to, to capture... The Lamagal and, and and the and the Egyptian in the same frame was just unique. So thank you very much for listening to my story. Thank you for sharing, Manos. And what part of the year were you there? Here with what? what, um, what I season? think that's this time of the year. I think that's early okay. June. Yeah, yeah, early June. But if, if you ask me, what the, the best time should be, sort of like um, three to three to four weeks before. I mean, sort of. Um, early may because mm. you can combine um the 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 lama guy maybe the egyptian is not going to be there the lama guy was will be there definitely and you can you can find the ptarmigan the um the the pygmy owl um yeah. and it, you know it's the legs of all the grouse you know all the all the mm. grouses and 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 it, it's it, it, it's an important uh and the catapade as well so it's it you know it's it's one of those areas that combines continental rarities in sort of like very small distance drive distances. So uh, it's it's uh, it's a very it's a very interesting place to to be to combine difficult species. Awesome! Thank you for sharing. Definitely something to look for look forward to go into photograph. Thank you, Manus. Uh, to cap this meeting today, I'm going to share my story as well, which uh, ends with a chase. Okay, ends with a chase. So, uh, so I'm uh, Yetmir, and um, I'm from Albania. I cur I live in New York. Uh, in the past six, seven years, I picked up wildlife photography and. Um, Started work. Uh, started photographing in New York Central Park nearby when the New Jersey Cape May. It's a hot zone to photograph. Florida, all East Coast, pretty much. And then I moved into Europe during the uh, uh, the pandemic, and uh, that's when really got in introduced to photographing around Europe. Been to uh, Spain, Bulgaria, Balkans, pretty much everywhere. In Greece, I was looking when I went in Greece. I was looking for a guide. And I found the guide, and I don't know what happened. Now. It's been years. It's been six, seven years. Uh, I wasn't able to coordinate, basically. But I look forward to. Um, you know, I have Manos there, and he he he's introducing me some uh some uh movement, right? Some places that you can go now and photograph in Greece. So that's great. 
where I'm here now, I am with a friend in Kenya, right? We This is uh, 2022, February, third week of February. We just have arrived, the day started. The plan was that we're gonna go to Masai Mara and then start to, you know, uh, to photograph. So we went to the camp, to Masai Mara, and then we couldn't wait to get out, to get in the car. And then as soon as we got out, uh, uh, Warthog, uh, Ward, uh, was it Warthog? Ward, uh, uh, Warthog? Gold, let me yeah, see. Warthog. Warthog, that's it, yes. Uh, this is the one that, that the, the very first thing we see, but this is extremely close now to the camp where we're staying. And it's the first time you see an, uh, a mammal. Uh, usually, in my case, we, I photograph birds. Uh, mammals are very hard to come by, uh, be that in New York, East Coast, or Europe, at least the places that I've been. So for me to see an animal and so effortlessly, right, right there, we're talking about 25 meters. Uh, this was the first. So we, we are we are here within uh, less than five minutes. This was the first picture. We drive a little bit. We see some impalas all together. Uh, beautiful creatures, right? Uh, and then uh, I, it's it's a feeling that you cannot. You cannot believe you're going to get to see so many animals, you know, within like this is, I, I, I am in my seventh moment. Everybody's so excited and uh, nobody's talking. You can only hear the shutter speeds, uh, in the, you know, the of the shutters, right, of the cameras. And um, uh, and then it gets very excited. But and, and then I'm thinking what, I mean, that's pretty much it. I cannot get any better. And then as we move, as we get closer, there is a baboon. It was the first of a of a, of of a number, there are about hundreds of baboons in the back of this one. He's passing the he's passing the road. So we are now about twelve minutes into the drive, and I'm like I'm getting so excited with this. I mean, already the trip kind of paid for itself within like 10, 15 minutes, and then uh, as soon as this guy passes, I uh, on the right hand side of the car. I see uh, maybe five, six uh, Thompson gazelles uh, hanging together. And one of the guys, one of our friends noticed that there is actually a, a cheetah uh, hiding behind them. And, and it looks like a, a chase is being built up almost. And we are very excited because that's one of those things that you can only see in the documentaries, right? It's not something that you normally see and we where we usually photograph, forget it. It's, 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 it's amazing. So at in, at one point, uh, the cheetahs actually uh, the cheetah uh, moves and then starts running towards the the groups of the Thompson gazelles and then and, uh, and this is my picture that I took there about this they are a little bit farther maybe uh, about uh, seventy hundred meters away but I was I mean to be able just to see it. <laughs> I took this pictures and then I took the camera down. I was just looking at at in in awe, right? It was it was quite unbelievable to witness it, uh, and and then um, like one of the questions that came to my mind immediately was like, my God, I'm only fifteen minutes away from where the people live. This is a wild cat. I mean, do how does that work? I mean, do they do they even are they danger to people? I'm thinking, right? That's a natural thought. And then we asked the we asked the guide and he says uh, these are this uh, these cats and the wild animals here are very territorial. They never go out of their territory. They know where to hang, where to stay, and they, 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 they there is usually not a problem. But this was the moment. Like and then imagine now you arrived in Kenya, you arrived in, into Masai Mara, and that's like the very first things that you see. And it's like you can, I mean I found the and actually I, I I don't believe I saw anything better than this for the rest of the eight days you know but uh th th that was essentially my moment and um i'll come back here and uh, thank everybody for sharing their uh experiences to us i hope uh for the viewer this was as exciting as it was for us to share with that said uh thank you so much for being part of this experience guys and uh we look forward to other recordings with that said have a wonderful evening Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.